name is Jenny Hanlon, and I am a parent and family educator through um, Stillwater's Early Childhood Family Ed Program. This is my third year with the district. My children are both in high school. I have a senior graduating this year and a sophomore, and both have um, been through the Stillwater school system since kindergarten. We have loved it. Uh, so I, I'm, I feel pretty lucky to be a part of this, um, not only as um, a parent educator with the district, but also as a parent who's had children go through the program. Um, and Amy Berge is here with us as well. She's the early childhood supervisor, so she'll be able to answer any questions that might be kind of more related to that when we get to the end. And then um, in a second, I'll turn it over to Carissa Keister. I just wanted to share the format with you all. Um, Chris is going to kind of walk us through um, just a few slides with some logistical pieces. And then we have a panel of three kindergarten teachers and a panel of three parents that have had a kindergartner go through the or start um, in the district. And we have a series of questions for both panels. And then we will finish up with that, with those panel questions by 145 and then open that up all to all of you to see if you have other questions that we didn't get to. Um, all right, so Carissa, I'm gonna pass it over to you. Thanks for being with us today, Carissa. Yes, well, thank you all for being here. Um, happy Friday afternoon and welcome to Stillwater Area Public Schools. As first time kindergarten parents, this is really your introduction to our school district and um, we just want to thank you so much for choosing us. We believe that we have some really amazing things going on. You're going to see today, we have incredible teachers and you're gonna hear from parents about some of the amazing experiences that they've had. Um, and so we just, we just want you to feel like you've made a really good choice. I also want you to know that we have a lot of people here to support you through the journey. Um, from the very first day of, of kindergarten all the way through uh, time of graduation, we are here to help you in any way we can. So whether it's um, one of your child's teachers, the principal of your school, the superintendent, myself, anyone in the district, custodians, paraprofessionals, whoever it is, feel free to reach out, ask questions. We talk a lot about needing our kids to learn how to ask for help. We need that for you too, to learn how to ask for help and just let us know what we can do to um, support you through this journey. That first um, entrance into kindergarten is kind of scary. Maybe for your kids, it's a little nerve wracking, but for parents, it's really, really scary to let your babies go and to hand them over to somebody else all day long. So um, you will see that we have amazing people that are there to guide them and bring them into the classroom and teach them along the way. And what we wanted to do briefly today is just show you a quick preview of what's going to be ahead for you and your family in the coming years. So we have a really fun, high energy video that just gives you a feel for what our school district is all about. So this will just take a couple minutes and we'll show this. Hopefully technology will work. <laughs> just an unbelievable experience and advantage that we're giving to kids.
I've seen that video a million times and I still get excited. Um, we just have so many incredible things going on here to celebrate and be proud of. So welcome and we look forward to having you and your family a part of all of this. So um, many of you should have received a kindergarten enrollment packet in the mail in the last couple of weeks. If you didn't, I'm going to, um, as soon as I'm done talking, I'm going to put my email address in the chat and you can email me and um, I will make sure that something gets sent to you. If you have other questions that come up, you can certainly email me about that as well and I'll do my best to find answers for you. But we do um, typically in December invite you into our school buildings to take a tour and see what our schools are like. Of course, this year, um, our tours are not happening in person, unfortunately but we are putting together some videos and you can go to this link and find some videos that introduce the teachers at each school as well as the principal. And we will um, have additional things up in the next couple of days that just give you a preview of what the school kind of looks like and feels like. So watch that for our virtual tours. The deadline for enrollment is January 15th. So you will want to submit your forms by January 15th. Um, by the end of January, we will notify families who have applied for alternate enrollment. So again, you have a kind of assigned school to your area, but you also have the option to choose a different school within the district and apply for alternate enrollment and the form is included in that packet. We also have a Spanish immersion option, so you could have applied for that as well and would be notified by January if you were accepted into Spanish immersion. On February 26th, we are going to hold a virtual kindergarten orientation for families and students. This is typically a time when we bring everybody into the school and again have some fun activities for the kids and the parents have some conversations with staff. We're going to do that virtually this year and we are working hard to be really creative and find fun ways to make this um, exciting for your kids as well as informative for you. And then know that we are planning something in the spring when we can actually bring your kids in when it's a little bit safer to do so and let them get a feel for what kindergarten is going to be looking like. So watch for that information coming um, a little bit later. And finally, um, there are some things that we need for you to uh, have done before that first day of kindergarten. One is early childhood screening. If your child hasn't been screened yet, that's okay. There's still time to do that. Um, this is just a simple way for us to be able to identify maybe any challenges that your student might have, whether, um, and those are things that we can then make sure we're addressing right away. We also need you to make sure you're turning in some forms. So have your child have their physical, uh, turning in immunizations or any waivers. Um, all of that information needs to be to the school before the first week of school or the first day of school. And then finally, um, Ready, Set, Go conferences. And we will talk a little bit more about that. Hopefully one of our teachers can tell more about what Ready, Set, Go conferences are. But it's a great chance for you to just get into the school, have your kids meet the teacher, you get to meet the teacher and do a little bit of um, just transitioning to help them feel comfortable on that first day of school. So with that, we're gonna to get to the good stuff. I'm gonna turn it over to Jenny and she's going to lead the panel and um, provide you with all the answers you're looking for today. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Carissa. I, um, I'm so glad we were able to, to watch that video today because we, we weren't able to last night and it is, it is inspiring. And um, I saw last night on the news that um, Dennis McDonough was asked to be a part of the White House again, which is pretty, pretty cool. And you know, we have two pretty famous alumni right in this call right now too, right? You, Carissa, and myself, <laughs> we're not really famous. But anyways, um, I wanted to introduce, I'm very um, grateful to our three kindergarten teachers that are able to be here um, today. We know um, teachers have been putting in so much, um, so much extra time this, this past year. They always do, but even more so. Um, and Melody Schumacher is here with us from Lily Lake. Uh, Deb, Deb Simsek is here with us from Rutherford Elementary School. And then Megan um, Nippenberg. I hope I'm, I hope that the K is silent. If I'm wrong, Megan, please correct me <laughs> when, when you get on. Um, it's what? It is Knippenberg. Oh, Knippenberg. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Megan. Um, and Megan is um, teaching online. This She's been teaching online this whole year. Obviously, um, Melody and Deb are also teaching online at this point, but they were teaching in the hybrid um, model when, when the school year began. When we go through these questions, we are going to um, be moving forward with the assumption that, that you... Um, that we will be in person in the fall. There's a lot of months between now and then, and um, we're gonna we're gonna move forward with the hope that that is the case. So um, as um, we're kind of talking with the, the kindergarten panel um, of teachers and parents to kind of have that that mindset. Um, so the first question that I would like to ask the the kindergarten teachers is, what will children be learning during their year with you in kindergarten? And Megan Knippenberg, um, would you mind starting? 
Yeah, sure. Thank you. Well, obviously this year is very different than most, but in a typical kindergarten year, um, your children will come in and we start our year by really getting to know one another and we really work on those social and emotional pieces of kindergarten and just getting to know each other, building community, learning about routines and um, following schedules. Um, so that's kind of how we're starting our year. Your child will get an opportunity to learn about our Letterland characters, which are, is our alphabet and phonics program. They will learn how to sound out words and eventually transition into learning how to read books. Um, your kindergartner will be a writer this year. They will write starting with pictures and labels and eventually writing stories. It's really fun to see the growth from the beginning of the year until the end of the year. You'll be amazed at what a kindergartner, a five and six year old can do by the end of the year. So it's really fun to see that. Math, um, we do counting, we do number recognition. Um, we are working on simple addition and subtraction stories. We might be counting coins. We'll be learning about daily routines like calendar routines, the days of the week, the months of the year, talking about sequencing. Um, social studies and science is very hands-on and, and we try to apply it to the real world um, and give them opportunities. For example, we do a past and present unit and in a lot of the kindergarten classrooms, your kids will get to pretend to go back in time and see what it was like um, to be a kindergartner when there wasn't electricity and when they had to write on slate boards. So we give them plenty of opportunities for that pretend play. And um, speaking of play is really important in our kindergarten rooms and we give them lots of opportunities to play with friends, um, to play through academics. Um, we do a lot of um, small centers and small group work. I'm trying to think like this is a lot of things to talk about like but your your child will be growing they will you'll be amazed at the things that they come home telling you about um, and the pictures they're drawing and the stories they have to tell about their friends and the things we've been learning and and doing together through play through work through song and dance so I know that they're gonna have a really good time thank you Megan uh, Deb Simsek do you want to add anything to that there's really not a lot to add. <laughs> Megan did a great job. I would say probably the second that we have a huge focus on community building, routine building, independence, um, learning how to be a friend, learning how to be a successful student. So yeah, that's what I would add. All right, great. How about Melody? Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I would say, Megan, you did a beautiful job. You covered so many things. I would say in kindergarten, your child learns how to do school we spend that beginning part, those first six weeks building community, and we learn how to be a scholar. What does it look like to be a, a kindergartner? And that, that's everything from waiting your turn at the drinking fountain to sharing toys. Um, how do you line up? It's the, um, it's the how you do school that sometimes I think parents forget that kids need to be taught all those little things about school and preschools, our preschools do an amazing job getting kids ready for that. It's just a whole new world when you're there all day, every day with kindergarten expectations. So I just was wanting to add, um, we learn how to be a scholar, how to be in school. Thank you, Melody. All right, what can parents do between now and the first day of school to make sure their child is ready for kindergarten? Melody, do you want to start us off? Sure, yeah. So I would say anything you can do to help your child be independent at um, skills such as zipping and putting things away and opening and closing lunch containers. Um, advocating for themselves when they need to use the restroom or when they need help. Um, I think a lot of times parents might think that we want you to get ready and like really work on numbers and letters and getting them to read and hey you know like we've got that like we're, we're we will teach them to read and we will teach them to do um, the academics so I think for me it's just really important that kids have a sense of independence when they walk into kindergarten and that they know um, that they're capable of doing the things that we expect of them. And hey, yeah, we would love it if you teach them the letters in their name and basic colors and shapes and those kind of things. But, um, and you know, how to share 
take turns. Those are all things um, that, and they need practice at that. And that's, it's hard right now when we're not having the, the play dates and maybe they're not interacting and having time with other kids. But just knowing that, um, that there's many of them, we become a school family. And so just teaching them that um, they're not always gonna get what they want right, right when they want it. And another thing, um, I would say limit screen time too. That's another thing that I encourage people to do so that when they come to school, they know that they're gonna spend the whole day not on a device um, and have that instant feedback from it. Melody, I wanna pick, piggyback off of something you said. Um, you mentioned that it is hard to kind of practice those, sh those sharing and taking turns things right now since there's many children that aren't spending time with other kids beyond their home. One thing that I recommend, even if um, your child's an only child, you can still build those skills even between your interaction with them. So when you're playing with your child, you don't need to act like a child, but to think like a child. So if your child says, Put this, put this hat on. I, you need to wear this hat while we play pretend. Most other children aren't just going to accept that, right? They're gonna say, no, I wanna wear that hat. So think about um, ways that you can respond to your child that um, is like a child, again, that we, where they're having to kind of practice and, and mod modify um, those things because their time with you parents is really practice for them to be with their peers. And so even though, yes, they're not having that peer-to-peer -peer interaction, they can still be gaining, gaining those skills. So hopefully that can help us feel a little less bad about the times that we're in and they're having less, less of that. Deb, do you want to add on to, um, thank you, Melody, for that, that your answer there. Um, with what, what else parents can be doing between now and then? Yep, the first thing that came to my mind was work. also screen, screen yeah. time, limiting screen time. Um, the other things, probably things you're doing, just read, read as much as you can. Read and cuddle and talk about books. Um, and then I'd say when you're teaching letters and numbers, do it practically. You know, you're going on walks, you're talking about numbers on a mailbox. You know, you're at the grocery store, you're talking about numbers. So not sitting down and drilling things into your kiddos, but using opportunities that just happen to come your way during the day. Um, you know, cooking with them, talking to them, just things I'm sure most of you just are really good at, but that's stuff that helps kids so much prepare for school and also become more independent. They're gonna be confident. Um, so that's the stuff I would say, you know, the name writing, um, basic academic stuff is a huge bonus, but do it in a way that's fun and and age appropriate. All right, thank you, Deb. How about you, Megan? Do you wanna add anything to that? Um, yeah, what the, the lady said before me is on point, but just a couple other things, you know, personally I wanted to add was um, when you're talking and working with your kids and playing, also talk about like, ask them how they're feeling about coming to kindergarten. Like they might be feeling nervous, they might be feeling super excited, but I think it's important for them to be able to say like, this is how I'm feeling and ask them if they have questions because chances are they probably aren't going to ask you. You might want to say like, do you have any questions about kindergarten or what do you think it might be like? I think just starting that conversation will help them like kind of think about it and prepare in their mind. Like, you know, how are you going to feel? Like you won't get to see me the whole day and, and kind of like ask questions like that and kind of get them emotionally prepared. Um, and another thing too is going back to like the screen time, but also setting up some other routines prior to the first day of school. Um, you know, in the summer, we're more relaxed. We don't have like those strict schedules, at least at my home, my daughter might sleep in more, but maybe a couple weeks before the first day of school, you're starting to set a routine. Like we get up at the same time every morning or we eat breakfast, whatever works best, of course for your families, but I would say even like setting up a bedroom, to bed bedtime routine or a, a morning routine and maybe helping have your child participate in that and they could draw some pictures of what they're gonna do at night and get ready for the next day. Um, I think having them be that participator and having them follow kind of like a schedule, even if it's like we brush our teeth, we get our jammies on. If you're following that same kind of schedule every day, a little bit leading up to school, it might be easier transition to come to school and be like, oh, I have to follow this schedule and do this and then this. Oh, I do that at home already. And then they can kind of make a connection with that right. as well. 
Thank you, Megan. I love that advice about putting together um, with your child kind of a, a schedule of different routines. That's a great, a great thing. Now, again, we're in a very different year this year, um, but I would like um, you to take a little bit of time to just describe what a typical day in kindergarten would would look like. Deb, could I put you on the spot for this one? Sure. So non-COVID. We're yes. <laughs> a typical day. Yep. Yeah. Kiddos come and we in most kindergartners have a, a soft start, which there's games, there's books, there's something for kiddos to do as, as they arrive because we offer free breakfast for all kindergartners. So there are kiddos that are eating breakfast. So once everybody's in our room, we all do morning meetings. And uh, that's our time to ask questions, to do a message, to we do our math calendars at that time. We um, play a game, we dance. Um, at, at Rutherford and I'm sure most of the schools we focus a lot on our, our reading in the morning so it's Letterland which is our phonics it's our readers workshop where the kids are are learning how to be a reader um, they read independently they read with partners um, we're focusing on different aspects of books we do writers workshop which is also teaching them how to be a writer um, we do centers word work learning centers where they're breaking apart the phonics um, they're doing some skills that maybe they're working on. So some kiddos right now in my class are working on beginning sounds. Some are working on ending sounds. Some are working on reading uh, consonant, vowel, consonant words. Some are working on silent E. So depending on where they're at, they're working on some skills um, in that area. Uh, and then we take, during the fall, we take a break in the morning. In the winter, when getting gear on is time consuming, we don't usually go out for a morning recess time, but we'll move and dance. and then we get to lunch. And I don't know if you want somebody else to do the afternoon, kind of the typical afternoon. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to? Thank you, Deb. Sure. Yeah. Um, we in the afternoon, so your child will eat lunch at school. They'll have the option of eating a school lunch. Um, we call that hot lunch, but some of the kids don't really understand that. Um, or a home lunch, just a cold lunch. And then um, they have a recess time, about 20 minutes playing outside. Then we all come back in and we do a quiet time where um, depending on which teacher you have or um, what school you're at, in, in my classroom, we do read, rest, write. Um, some kids choose just to lay on their beach towel. Some kids write the whole time. Some kids read books. Um, sometimes I play music or I'll do a audible story uh, with the kids. So it's about 10, 15 minutes of them just trying to just calm their bodies. We're resetting. I do math in the afternoon. I know some teachers flip-flop that writing and do the writing in the afternoon. I do the math in the afternoon. Um, we have our specialist time where the kids go to art, music, um, library, or gym class. And then we also have another afternoon recess where we go outside with our kids again. Um, and then we do science and social studies. And Megan kind of gave you an idea of that with um, more centers-based and more hands-on um, exploratory for um, science and social studies and then we have a closing meeting where we end our day talking about what worked and what didn't work and what goals we have for the next day that we meet and I think um, one thing that I said last night too was that um, you can expect that your child will be um, our days are wonderful and filled with wonder we are busy and happy and learning and active all day long and they will come home and they will be exhausted and so tired from from all of our learning oh and I forgot the hugest part of our day in the afternoon we play we have um, dramatic play and we have different um, centers like we might have the sensory table open or we might have the block center or the little Legos or the dinosaurs or um, the calico critter station like so we just have lots of options for play um, and all just hands-on fun um, toys that kids can play with or um, learning stations that we do that's like the kids very favorite part of the day almost every day so that's what we have awesome I'm glad you remember to add in the play because that's such a huge part right? <laughs> I think that's always a concern is are they going to miss out on playtime after you know once they start kindergarten and I, I love hearing that that's still a big piece of of kindergarten. Can I add one thing, Jen? Please do. Yeah. So Melody said your kiddos are going to come home tired and they are and you may not even recognize them some days. They may come home as little animals and you'll be, where did my kiddo go? And uh, just limit the activities you're choosing to, to schedule in the fall. Plan on not signing up, oh, them up for soccer and church choir and dance and this. Pick maybe one 
um, or pick none and just give the give them the fall to kind of get their feet under them and then start adding things back as you see your kiddo reemerge from that animal state but well and I wonder if we'll see that even more than ever in the fall because everybody's used to a slower pace of life right now um, because of the, the shutdown. So it might be, be um, tempting to sign up for a lot of things, but you are absolutely right to have. I think we've, all of us on the, the um, teachers here have seen that in our own children um, before too. Um, one last question for the teachers, and I'm sure there'll be others for you um, from all the parents on here. What else would you want parents to know? And I'll let just whichever one of you wants to start to just unmute yourself. You can go first. Oh, thanks, Megan. Yeah. I was just gonna say, like just to echo off, like when your child is coming home tired in the fall, just make sure that you give your child some grace and give yourself some grace. This is not a first day of school, you're learning everything. This is a gradual increase of teaching activities. And we start really, really slow. Our, t you know, our times for writing and reading are very, very short. And so your child can, you know, become accustomed to those routines and get used to them. But I would just say, um, it's a really big transition for both you and your child. Um, and it's a team effort. And I can, speak for all the teachers. I mean, we care about your children. Um, your child's interests are where our hearts are and we wanna make sure that we're doing the best thing. And feel free to communicate if something isn't going right or if something is going wonderful, let us know because we really rely on that feedback and we do a lot of reflection on our teaching. And so it's important that we know that we're a team. It's not you send your kid to school and you know the teacher will we are we're a team and we work together so just just wanted to say that thank you megan you ready deb i'll go next yeah so i'll say um i guess i'm going to say you guys are really lucky stillwater schools are a great school system um i just our my fourth son just well third and fourth a set of twins just graduated in the spring and we've had nothing but great experiences here and our kids have gone off to college absolutely prepared and seeing them we kept our twins home this fall to learn at home just because of the dorm situation but listening to them in classes online and they are looked up as leaders from their professors because they are so prepared and uh, so Stillwater Schools did a great job for our kids and I know they're going to do a great job for years but I also say have grace for your kids teachers too and just know that our motto in kindergarten is go slow to go fast. We are not gonna jump right in. Even if your kiddo is reading novels the first day of school, they're gonna spend those first six weeks learning how to be a kiddo and how to be a classmate and a friend. So we're gonna go slow so that we eventually can go a little faster. Um, I don't know, I love so water. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Deb. Melody, anything to add? Yeah, I would just say thank you for being here and you're doing um, a really good thing by just learning more about Stillwater Schools and kindergarten right now. And just echo what Megan said too, is that um, we don't take our jobs lightly. We love kindergarten. That's why we're here. Um, I've taught other grades and it, there's nothing like being a kindergarten teacher and seeing the growth that these kids are going to make each year. They come to us as these tiny humans that have been on the earth for five years and they leave us like reading and writing and being confident and independent little learners. Um, so I just wanna say thank you for being here and for trusting us with your kids. And we have the most fabulous kindergarten teachers. And I think this right now through COVID, we've really come together and we've worked together and we can play off each other's strengths. And so it's like a really big team of K teachers right now um, that has really, just brought us all closer and um, yeah, so I just wanted to say that and just thank you. Awesome, thank you, Melody. Um, all right, on to our parent panel. We have um, three parents with us today. Carrie Thielander is a parent at Rutherford. She has a second grader and a kindergartner. We have Ken Walls, who has a kindergartner at Lily Lake, who um, actually his um, son is, is in Melody's class right now. And I believe 
Carrie's um, son was in your class, Deb, right? A couple of years ago for kindergarten. Um, and then we have Dory Herman with us who has um, a child at um, the Spanish Immersion School at Lake Elmo and she'll have another kinder, uh, kindergartner starting there next year. Um, so as we're going through these questions, parents, and you got a dry run last night because you all three were on for that, um, to just keep in mind, we're gonna kind of think of typical times. Ken, you only have this year to go off of. Um, Soren was in the, the hybrid model. Carrie, you can kind of be thinking about the experience your second grader had as a kindergartner. Um, and I know, Dory, the one that we're kind of thinking about is currently in second grade. So the first question I have for parents is, tell us a little bit about how the transition um, to kindergarten went for your family. And Carrie, um, do you want to go ahead and start? Hi, sure, of course. Um, so when I was listening to all the teachers, I was like, yes, in my head, like nodding, because I think until probably November, our family dynamic was really different. Our little guy was tired. He was so tired when he came home and I was, missed him so much that I was so excited to see him that I would bombard him with like hugs and kisses and questions. And it didn't really go swimmingly. <laughs> like it just, it was hard on him. He was so busy during the day and he had so much fun. Um, but he was hungry and he was tired and it really took us a long time to figure out like, okay, you need to back off and like let this little, little guy just really have some time and some downtime. So I think that's really, really important for families to know that it's okay. It's okay just to let them have that little bit of time because those questions can come out, um, later on. Um, and with that, I would, I would really add that to not to bombard, but to think of one question during your day that you can ask. Just as you're going along your day before you pick up your kiddo, say, gosh, I'm going to ask them, like, who do they sit with at lunch today? Just something that will elicit a conversation and not a big broad, what did you do today? That's overwhelming when they've already had a really busy day. Um, the one thing that I think was hard for our family is um, we have a current kindergartner and his second grade brother, they're best friends. And something that we didn't anticipate was how our younger sibling felt when that older sibling was gone all day long. Um, they were busy playing all summer long and their whole lives and suddenly his best buddy was at school. On the flip side of that, our kindergartner at the time wanted to be home playing with his little brother and going on picnics and parks with his mom. So that was really hard too, to, um, to just kind of navigate that. We had a tricky fall. Um, but it got better because we all fell into this groove and we no one missed out on anything and it was even i think sweeter because we were able to come back and um and just really savor those moments and plan and plan for fun things as a family so it was tricky until november i would say all right thank you um how about ken there we go um i for us, the hardest adjustment was just getting used to the routine, uh, especially in, in the, the hybrid model. We were doing Adventure Club one day and school the next day, just getting used to that routine. And then, it, I, you know, for him, he a couple of weeks in, he understood it's Monday, I go this way, Tuesday, I go this way. For It was a harder adjustment, I think, for my wife and I to get used to, hey, we have to plan for tomorrow. He needs all of, you know, thing A and next day, oh, we don't need that, but we need this just trying to make sure we had had what he needed on a day-to-day -day basis and you know, just getting used to that, that, that new routine and, you know, the new roles for all of us of who's, who's going where. And uh, a big part of it was uh, getting Soren's sleep schedule adjusted. He wasn't getting up at the, at the same time as everybody anymore. You know, he could sleep in. So it was getting, getting him used to that, which, you know, allowed him to be up, you know, a little bit later. So just trying to try to find that adjustment. All right, thank you, Ken. And mm -hmm. how about Dory? Yeah, I, um, you know, kind of two things that have been touched on by teachers and parents alike. Um, your child will probably be, be very tired, um, physically tired, emotionally, mentally tired. Um, we did back off our extracurricular activities for the first at least couple of weeks. Um, because it was just too much. It was too overwhelming. It was too much physically and emotionally and mentally. Um, <clears throat> so I would just say, make sure your kiddo is um, drinking a lot of water when they get home. That's one thing that um, was a big change for us because I think our oldest, um, not that she wasn't getting opportunities to drink, but I think she would rather have 
played with friends or chatted with friends and she would come home with basically a full water bottle. So make sure they're getting water, make sure they're getting their vitamins, make sure they're getting their sleep, really try to um, maybe even get them in bed earlier if they need it um, and just give them some time to adjust and, you know, like was said, try not to overwhelm them. Um, the other big change was for our little one, um, going from having her sister around all day to being solo. And it was really, really hard on her. I am not as fun as my older daughter. And so it was like being home with, you know, boring mom. Um, so it was an adjustment for both of us. And even then the adjustment when our oldest would come home and it was like, you know, our youngest had a free range of all the toys and all the things all day. And then my oldest would come home and even just that adjustment of them then coming back together, um, took some time to really work out. There might be more fighting, there might be more, you know, arguing, um, but it does all come together. But I think, um, just realizing that it's a big change for your child, for yourself, um, and also for any other, um, people who are in the home. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dory. That's a great, great point. I'm glad that you, both, both you and Carrie have mentioned that impact on the other sibling. Um, what was the, um, or what are some things that you did to help your child get ready for kindergarten? Ken, do you want to go ahead and, and start? I'm sorry, my connection cut out. Which question did okay. you ask? Um, the, what are some things you did to help your child get ready for kindergarten? Uh, Soren was unbelievably excited for, for kindergarten from the time we did, you know, orientation. He was, you know, anybody and everybody he met, he wanted to tell them he was going to be in kindergarten. I'm pretty sure the UPS guy knew he was going to be in kindergarten. Like, he was just that excited. Uh, so, you know, a couple of weeks before we started working on, hey, we're going to, you know, we're walking, we're, we walked to Lily Lake. So let's get out. Let's walk the route so we know how to get to the crosswalk. Here's where we'll meet the crossing guard. Here's, you know, how we get up there. Uh, you know, we out. Obviously, we'd go to play at the playground every so often since it was so close, but you'll go up there, spend some time up there, get him familiar with the surroundings, um, and just, you know, kind of prepare him in, in, in that way. And we tended to back off about a week prior on doing too much and just kind of let him rest in preparation for, for going to school because we knew he was, going to, he was going to be tired coming home. You mentioned something last night, Ken, about um, some visual schedules that your family yes. has. Do yeah. you want to say a little bit about that? Yeah, so we have uh, several schedules up on our wall. We have a, a big month, you know, yearly calendar that we keep up with all of our stuff going on, which has been pretty minimal, minimally used this year. Then we have our weekly schedule broken down, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and kind of what, where we're doing and what we're go, you know, what's going on, who's going where. And then uh, we usually put the weather on there. We have a little magnets of weather and then activities that we have going on. So that way, if the kids ever do, you know, wonder what's going on, there's this visual for them to look at. Um, and, you know, there's no words on it. Everything is picture based. So that way they can fully in interpret it. And we try to use that as best we can to, to get them prepared. Um, Soren very early on, he liked to know what was coming up. He didn't want to, he didn't want to be set into a transition without knowing it. So we always made sure that, hey, today's a, you know, a daycare preschool day. Today is, you know, a kindergarten day, you know, whatever it was. We always made sure to do that. So that was one technique we used to try to try to help him, help guide him into, into kindergarten. And a good, I think, um, parent survival tip too, when you have two, two parents working outside the home too, to not only kind of help prepare the kids, but also to kind of remind yourself too, where yes. do my child need to be? Where do I need to be? All right. Thank you, Ken. How about you, Carrie? What are some things that you did to help prepare your, your kiddos? Yeah, well, I love Ken's idea about getting to school and doing that before the year begins. That is something we also did. Um, we played on the school playground a lot. And I think that was really nice just to be, that was a little bit of an ownership. We're going to go to my school and play on my playground. Um, and then that familiarity, once they did start school, that felt safe. They've been there. They know they were there with their siblings. Um, there's that comfort. So I think that was really important. And we started that early in the, the spring before and then into the summer. Um, I also have, like, we read a lot at our house, and I think um, just reading books, When I Miss You, um, Froggy Goes to School, I just pulled a couple from our shelf, but 
um, The King of Kindergarten and Jumping into Kindergarten. Um, you can find these books at your library too and finding them um, online and getting them in your library queue early. I know by August a lot of those back to school books are are snatched up and may not be returned until after the first day of school. So starting early in June. Um, but also I really have found that there's some really nice resources online. There's like really super fun, cute teachers who read books um, online. And you can type in a, a name of a book and or back to school books and they pop up as long as you've kind of made sure that the content is okay. Um, we've done that with our kiddos. There's, uh, we really like the teacher's library or, um, story time at Ani's house. She's super fun and bubbly and just reads these cute stories with different voices and um, it's inexpensive. You don't have to buy anything, of course. Something else we did, um, we went online and looked at the school, the inside of the school, there's always pictures, but then also we pulled up like the kindergarten teacher's pictures. And at the time we weren't sure who our kiddos would have, but it's really nice to say, gosh, one of them will be your teacher this year. And then once we got closer and we knew we were able to print off the picture and put it on our refrigerator. And then they were able to just have some familiarity with that's who I'm going to look for. That's my teacher. Um, and then once of course you get those letters, it feels really, really special too. Um, and then again, I just also later in the year, maybe like a couple weeks into it, attend some of those back to school events, those open houses. Um, and then we had our boys give us a tour, not our youngest because he's home right now, but our oldest um, would show us the gym and he was so cute. He would say, this is my gym or this is my lunchroom. And so really taking that ownership, I think really felt special and, and good to him. And he was giving us a tour, which I think really helped him feel like a part of that community. All right. Thank you, Carrie. How about you, Dory? And Dory, I wonder if you wanted to, could maybe add in just a little bit, if there's any prep you did with Nora, um, with the fact that she was starting at the Spanish immersion school too, just not that sure. implying that you did, but just if you did or not. <laughs> yeah, she was in um, Spanish immersion preschool. She, so she did have some um, Spanish experience, but many of the kids, I would probably say most of the kids going into Spanish immersion do not have any um, experience speaking Spanish or any other language. Um, so for us, it was more um, just trying to solidify uh, ideas and things um in english and i think that kind of gives a good base to start learning another language um we do a lot of things with games in our house um trying to make learning fun almost to where they don't realize they're learning um we do a lot of you know go fish with regular decks of cards helps with learning numbers we have a go fish with letters the kids love playing um that type of game um and we do, we have a lot of cooperation games where you're not, you know, working against each other, you're working together for a goal. Um, and I think it really helps uh, not only learn that academics kind of stuff, but it, um, you know, it's, it's how to take turns. It's how to lose gracefully, how to win gracefully, how to have a positive attitude. Um, so we do a lot of that at our house. Um, as far as I know, Melody touched on this. Um, we made sure um, anything our oldest was going to wear to school, she could take off, she could put on, she could tie, or she could close and open um, anything from out, outside gear to um, lunch containers. Um, I think that kind of practical stuff, like Melody said, was really um, helpful for the teachers and for them um, to kind of gain that independence when they get to school. Thank you, Dory. We are right at 1.45, so there was going to be one other question I asked the parents, but I might hold it off till the end. Um, so now I want to just kind of open it up um, to our to any participant that's on here. Um, all of you probably are muted at this point, so if you have a question, to just unmute yourself, um, or you could put it in the chat. But it is nice to nice to hear voices. It's always harder in a virtual setting to know because you can't see when somebody's about to talk. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. I'll ask a question. Thank you. <laughs> I've got two sets of twins, so I've lost my mind a little bit over here. But I forgot to send in birth certificates already with the kindergarten papers I sent in a few weeks ago. So where do I put those now? Do you know? 
Yeah, we can still take those. So you can either um, send a copy to the enrollment. That's probably the easiest way is just send them to the enrollment office, the same place you sent your application um, or your enrollment forms. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Just make sure um, you have some contact information included just in case they have any questions or need to get a hold of you. Sure, sure thing. Well, Teresa, thank you for being on here despite supervising <laughs> two sets of twins right now. <laughs> They're two and five. So oh my busy. goodness. Wow. That's that's pretty awesome and probably exhausting. So thank you for being here. Who else has a question? And again, feel free to put them in the chat if you don't want to talk out loud. Sorry, um, I have a angry baby here, but I'll try to ask my question. Is there, um, how soon will parents find out if, they were, if their child was accepted into the Spanish immersion? Yeah, I can address that. So we have a lottery system for Spanish immersion, um, and we typically do that lottery. So January 15th is the enrollment deadline, and usually about a week after that, we do the um, lottery. And so you will be notified by the end of January to let you know if you made it in or if you're on a wait list. And we do have quite a bit, if you're on the wait list, don't, don't give up. There's usually quite a bit of change. One of the problems, unfortunately, with Spanish immersion is we don't provide transportation. So there are families who apply and then realize later, oh, I just don't have a way to get my kid to school. And so then they might um, fall off of the list and someone else from the waiting list can move up. So uh, expect something probably by the end of January. Thank you, Carissa. And yeah, don't hesitate, um, those of you that I'm sure many of you are supervising your children at the same time. So if there's kid noise in the background, please don't let that stop you from asking a question, especially us um, the teachers on here, we're used to a lot of noise. <laughs> Hi, I've got a question about uh, Adventure Club and the process to kind of enroll into that. I know it's different this year with COVID, but can you talk a little bit about the process to enroll in Adventure Club? Um, Amy or Krista, do you have? I was just going to ask Amy if you have a bit more information. Otherwise, while we're here, I can quick look up. I know it's online and I can read through some of that, but Amy might be able to speak. To yeah, I can. It's, it's not exactly my wheelhouse, but I know just enough. Um, there will be a uh, open registration period. It's typically in early April and parents can um, register at that time. I think the window is usually open for a good week and then after that um, they take those uh, that registered and they look through and they will take returning students first. There is priority with those and then um, any siblings of those um, uh, from the students that um, had attended Adventure Club in the years previous. And then depending on how many open slots they have, then they will go down the list and accept um, other students. So I'll just um, reiterate too, at your orientation in February, uh, there will be a lot more information shared about Adventure Club and the registration process. I believe it is the April window that Amy mentioned. So watch for more information at orientation. Um, the other thing that I was going to mention, just put a plug out, we are always looking for people to work in Adventure Club. So if you know of somebody, um, a college student, uh, a grandparent who's looking for some extra money, that is one of the challenges we have is we do have to turn away families occasionally because we just don't have enough staff to run the program. Um, but that said, we, we do try to get as many people as possible. And we do, uh, there's, I think during a school year, there's 700 or so kids that we're um, providing childcare for. So definitely sign up if you need it. And if you know anyone looking for a job, it's a great job. One thing that um, I know a lot of families have done in the past too, especially for kindergarten and first grade is try to find a neighbor to do some, some help with some of that. That can kind of ease the transition a little bit. Um, one, because your child is going to be tired from a, long, a longer day at school and it's just a lot of stimulation to have 
that before school and after after care. So um, just just some options to to kind of think about and outweigh. Obviously, if there's a neighbor, there's some drawbacks because if the neighbor ends up being sick, then you are out of childcare for the day, different than Adventure Club. Um, but just something that that might be worth um, considering. Hey, and Jenny, last night some parents had questions about um, what would happen on the first day of school or how will my child get to their teacher? Um, and all those kind of questions, we want to reassure you that we have plans in place. We greet the children outside the first couple of weeks. We have signs. Um, the principal has set out, uh, um, sent out presentations like with our faces showing like where you're going to meet your teacher and we walk them to their classroom. Um, they're, they're always with a grown up who they recognize that very first day might be a little tricky just getting them to us but we want to reassure you that we do have a plan we've done it before um, it runs really smoothly your child's going to learn their way much quicker than you expect them to um, and um, so if you have questions on that i just wanted to reach out you know and just say that hey we we've, we've got that covered we'll keep your baby safe the whole day long Thank you, Melody. I remember my child coming home from kindergarten with like a pin on on him with like the bus name or something. And it was reassuring. I hadn't, I don't know why, but I hadn't thought of that question. But it was it was reassuring when I saw that, like, oh, oh good. They they didn't they didn't lose him. They they knew where, where he needed to be. <laughs> I alluded to this before, but do one of the teachers want to talk a little bit about ready set go conferences and how that really helps with that transition? Thanks, Chris. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can I can start on that one, um, and I'd say too on piggybacking on Melody's is the first day of school. It's super helpful if you send your child to school the same way they're going to come every single day. So I know you're going to want to come to school and take pictures at the front of the the school, but do that either after school or just don't do that 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 day. It makes things a lot more difficult for your kiddo. Um, so that'd be the first thing. But yes, two things. They talked about you guys going to um, the kindergarten screening and that's happening now and that they're going to check your child's hearing, their sight, that kind of stuff. But then we'll do ready, set, go the first week of school and your kiddos will come in one on one with their teacher. And the big focus is just for them to meet us, talk to us, um, feel comfortable when they come to us their first actual day of school that they know who they're coming to. And then if there is time, we'll spend some time just talking about alphabet letters, maybe some numbers just to get a feel for where they're at academically on a very, very basic level so that we can kind of know where we're going to start and answer questions. They'll take a basic tour of the classroom and the spaces so they can see where they're at. And oftentimes we have them bring their supplies to get those organized so that the first day of school, you're not lugging a big bag or sending it with them. So that's my two cents. Thank you, Deb, for that. I that was you brought up a really good thing about um, that that does take place the first week of school. Something to not let yourself get caught off guard by is to just be aware of the school schedule. We um, there are different start dates depending on the grade that your child is in, and that has been determined um, based on a lot of um, reflection and discussions and what's developmentally appropriate and all of that. And it really, really has been decided on what's best for kids. So I know it can be inconvenient if your second grader is starting and your kindergarten kindergartner isn't, um, and then suddenly you're having to figure out childcare. Um, but I promise you it has been made um, with the child's best interest in mind and that it really does help with, with the transition for, for all involved. And again, there's different, that's, that's different when they start sixth grade to and ninth grade um, with, with some different starts. So just be aware of those um, as, as you move through so you're not suddenly surprised by that in August. Um, there's a question here, what's a typical class size? Uh, Melody, do you want answer answer that one sure yeah and I also want to say just back to the ready set go conferences you guys this is a gift that both I am getting and your child is getting um, there's so much happens in that 30 minutes that we are together um, and when I when I had taught kindergarten and we didn't have that ready set go conference it was a different feel the first day of school um, and they get that time with the teacher and I get that time with them so much happens and that relationship is really started at that point um, so it's just a beautiful gift that we are given to have ready set go conferences all right 
um, the question for typical class sizes are, um, I would say 20 to 25 kids in a class. Um, I think it depends. Um, you know, I don't know the top of the range might be 25, but typically I feel like I've had like right around 20 kids in my class by myself. Like it's me in there. Um, gone are the days when you have a para, you know, it, when I went to school half day and there was like a para with the teacher, that, that that's not, um, there are paras available for students who need that, um, but it's mainly the classroom teacher. And I think just to add on to what Melody was saying, we don't get paras, but I, I know I can speak for Brookview. We really welcome parents to come in and volunteer and help out. Um, sometimes you might be working with just one-on-one -on -one and helping with a reading game with kids, or we have little parties in our classroom or field trips. So we try to get families and parents and even grandparents. I have a lot of grandmas and grandpas that come in um, and just kind of volunteer. Of course, with you would need to take care of like the volunteer background check and all of those things. So we're making sure that your kids are safe. We're not just letting anyone come into the room. Um, we, we're making sure that your kids are in a safe environment all the time. But that's just another way um, where we can involve other people in the classroom and the kids like to see other faces and not just their teachers every day. So, Yeah, that's, that's a really good point, Megan, that there, I remember when I go into pop into my children's kindergarten class, it was rare that there was just the one adult in there that there are so often parents or grandparents coming in to volunteer. So um, can I have a question? Yes. Uh, so we had a kindergartner last year and now obviously a first grader at home doing online learning, but with the hopes next year of both my kindergartner next year and then my second grader, um, just curious to know, is my second grader going to be able to kind of help out because she likes to be a big sister with when they get off the bus for my kindergartner to find their assigned teacher and kind of give her a little send off and hi, hug, goodbye, or how do, is that appropriate? Is that allowed? How does that work? I'll go ahead and talk on that. So at, I'd say yes, that's completely appropriate. Our goal would be to wean them off of that and that maybe the first few days it's in the classroom they drop them off and then maybe it's at the door and then maybe it's at the hallway and as your kindergartner gets more confident they might be able to say see ya, I'm good, I don't need your help. I'm good, I'll see you after school. So yeah, of course, like we've got siblings that do drop kids off and it's, we just tried to get it to be shorter and shorter so the kindergartner is more independent. Okay, thank you. Awesome, thank you. Any other questions? All right, before we hop off, if there's not another question, I just wanted to um, put a question back out to our panel of teachers or parents. Is there anything else um, that any of you would like to be able to pass on to parents? And then I will get to the question that just went in the chat. Any final words? Okay, let me get to this question then. Um, which school contact will I need? Okay, so she's thinking about um, with her twins, um, if she's wanting them to um, be in the same class or not be in the class, would that be getting in touch with the principal? I'm guessing to make that request. Yeah, Deb, do you wanna share any thoughts on that, having raised twins? <laughs> yeah, you know, we kept our twins in the same class, but we were at Lily, and Lily is the closed classroom. So we kept our twins together until the, in fourth grade, one of the twins asked to separate, and that's when we separated, but we told them that it was gonna to have to happen in fifth grade. So at the very minimum, we were gonna make them separate, but um, they were not, also tied at the at the hip they were very independent so they did fine at rutherford i try to encourage families of twins to separate only because our classrooms are open so the kids will see each other all throughout the day even if they're not in the same classroom uh, so it makes it a little bit i think more comforting for parents to know that okay they're not going to be totally apart but yeah as a parent you get to decide unless it's it is in their best interest then the school can step in and kind of encourage you in one way or another but yeah reach out to your to your principal and just say what you would like at this point. One of the things that I um, think is important to consider too with with twins um, and, and Deb you alluded to this that your your boys weren't 
completely attached at the hip. You know, if you find that one twin is more dominant than the other and um, might kind of take over or overpower the learning um, or interactions with peers, then that might be a reason to, to separate. Or if um, there's perhaps more more fighting where a break might, might be good a good too. Sure. Um, so a couple different things to, to consider, but I, I really like your thoughts on that, Deb, with depending on the setting they're in too. All right, any other questions? And I can stay on a little bit longer too, but I just, first of all, I wanna thank um, Melody, Deb, and Megan for being here. I know this is um, not typically in your, I know you're typically working during this time. You took um, a, a portion of your prep time to be a part of this today. Um, and we really, really appreciate it. Um, we appreciate all that you guys do. And I just wanna say to all of you parents, these three are a, a great representation of um, our kindergarten teachers and our, all of our teachers throughout the district. They're, they're um, they're very, very wise and professional and, and very, very sweet. I have had such great experiences with all of my children's teachers within the school district and feel really, really fortunate for that. Um, and Carrie, Ken, and Dory, just thank you very much for being a part of this. I know you guys took time away. Ken, you're taking time away from work today and your families, Carrie and Dory, and we just, we appreciate that. So thank you. We appreciate your wisdom and sharing your ideas. And all of you parents on here, just thanks for taking the time for this and we will continue to hope that um, think the world will be a little bit more straightened out by the time your your kiddo starts kindergarten and um, they will have a great experience they'll probably be so happy to be back with with other kids and the teachers um, I know we're all missing being in person and um, it will be a fabulous school year next year I think we will all be so grateful to um, be all in the same space again. So we look forward to getting to know all of you and have you be, um, have your kiddos be ponies.